Hey everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please press the thumbs up button. Subscribe, share, comment. I am always looking forward to the dialogue. I appreciate all of you. I read all the comments. Abe, one of our long-term subscribers, suggested that I get to the point on some of the videos. And I am going to take that advice. I apologize, guys, if I seem like I'm rambling in some of the videos. I need to cut my videos to under 10 minutes, maybe even 5 minutes. And that's something that I'm working on right now as we speak. Um, something I wanted to comment on real quick before I get to the main content of the video is Michael just created his own YouTube channel. Michael has a YouTube channel called the Security, the Armed Security Journal. And he's basically journalizing his life, documenting his life as a private security professional. And I really like it. He created, I think, two videos a couple weeks ago he talked about EDC carry as an off as an off-duty security officer which I found pretty interesting because I don't carry like maybe 90% of the equipment that he has off duty when I'm off duty I'm off duty what I like is that he articulates all of the his equipment and a lot of security professionals who carry all this crazy stuff crazy stuff off duty um, they don't even articulate why they have everything. So Michael, he's very articulate. He's intelligent. Make sure you guys give him a subscribe. He made a video last night that I think that you're going to love. He wants the security industry to be more professionalized. So watch, watch Michael's videos on his channel. This it's called the armed security journal. I will leave a link in the description box below and in, in the comments as well. So in today's video, I want to talk about armed security. And the complex that I see with, with armed security, for some reason, some armed security professionals have this, this complex about themselves that they are armed security, they're up here. And unarmed security is down here in the professionalism scale. I highly disagree with that thought process. And here's why. To be an unarmed private security officer, it does require, it requires more skill in my honest opinion. You have to have the skill set to turn down the intensity level of any stressful situation. And you have a lot less options available. I talked to a private investigator about eight months ago or nine months ago, his name's Herc. Uh, we'll, we'll call him Herc. And Herc got a gun pull on him when he was process serving. And Herc has excellent interviewing skills and people speaking skills. He was able to turn down the intensity of that situation. I'm trying to avoid the word de-escalate. He turned down the, the heat of that situation and the guy put the gun away. And he was able to leave the scene. The gun was pointed directly at him. He almost lost his life. To be unarmed and to deal with these armed situations requires excellent communicating abilities. Now that's assuming that that person who you're communicating with doesn't have clouded judgment. If that person has clouded judgment, clouded thoughts, it might help actually being armed. You have a lot more tools on, on your belt. Now I get it. If there's an active shooter incident, active killer incident, there's less that you can do. If somebody pulls a gun on you, there's a lot less that you can do. But what I found talking with security professionals is our unarmed folks have excellent communication skills. Not everybody, it just happens to be the ones that I have ran into. And they're able to compensate for not having a gun. So for example, they might not search a building by themselves, or they may not search a building on their own because they don't have a weapon. They might disengage themselves from situations because they don't have that firearm. They might not even respond to a situation because they don't have that firearm. And, and because of this, a lot of them are a lot safer. I'm gonna tell you the reality, reality of a gun. Um, I work security, unarmed security, for a good five years. Solid years. Um, every time I'm armed, I, I can't think of one situation 
where I was armed and it saved my life or it saved someone else's life. Now that's on the security sector side. Let me show you guys something real quick. So I just got off of work. Here's my Tenacore holster. You guys see something missing? Yeah, I forgot my gun. My off-duty gun. It happens. It, it happens rarely, but it happens. And quite honestly, I feel safe. I'm in my car where I normally film. And I'm still alive. I mean, I'm Sean is still here. Look, no gun. And I'm going to make it back home. <laughs> Tonight, I don't know why, or last night, I don't know why, but I guess... Maybe I haven't been thinking too clearly. Maybe old age. Maybe I'm just forgetting. But I look to the back where the rifle rack is at. And I'm choosing my words wisely. I look at my M4 and there is no magazine in the well. Sean forgot his ammunition. He forgot his magazine for his M4. In my 20 plus career, you wanna know how many times I had to use an M4 in real life to stop a threat? Zero, zero. Quick story, as a police officer, got a call of domestic violence, I was booking a prisoner. I had him in the holding cell. Those of you who are former Police officers, deputy sheriffs already know where, where this is going to go. This is, you guys already know where this is going to lead. Or if you work security in a custody situation where you're you're armed outside of the post and then you're unarmed inside, you know exactly where this is headed. So I'm booking a prisoner and we got a domestic violence call. So I rush to the scene. You guys already know what, hap what happened. I rush to the scene and I peek over the fence and I see this guy running after this woman. He's chasing her, she's screaming. He's saying, I'm going to F you up, I'm gonna beat your ass. She's running away. You wanna know what I pull out? I pull out my taser. I squeeze the shot, makes direct impact on the suspect. He falls to the floor. The damsel in distress, damsel in distress is saved. Go over to effect an arrest. Um, two pit bulls. Okay, two pit bulls come charging at me. Begin to put away the taser. Reach for my gun to lay down gunfire to stop both of them. It's a, it's a charging pit bull. Reach down and empty holster. Empty holster. At that point in time, realize I don't have a firearm. Go back to Taser. This is the X26. Um, pull the cartridge out and just um, press the trigger. Ignite, in, in, <laughs> ignites the stun gun, the electricity. I'm conducting electricity, get into stun gun mode. The dogs get scared and they, they turn around. Would a gun worked? Maybe. I mean, have you ever had to shoot a charging dog? Your chances of hitting a dog are not too great. What saved, okay, what's, what saved my life? I mean, a pit bull can go for your throat. It was here, guys. It wasn't a gun. It was, it was right here. The mindset, the ability to adjust to the situation. That's what helped me. That's what prevented me from getting my leg bit or my arm bit or my throat bit by two charging pit bulls. It wasn't, it wasn't the gun. I, I can't, I cannot think of too many situations with all of my long -term experience, considering how many contacts we've made with people, the, the tens of the thousands of contacts over 
over a lot of years, I can't think how many times a gun would have would have saved me or somebody else. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. What saves you most of the time is your mindset. Now, obviously, you need a gun if you're if you're working a dangerous post or you're working as a police officer because it's that one it's that one time where you're gonna need it. It's not going to be there and it's not going to be a great day. But I keep saying in the comment sections that security officer will say, well, you know what, you're no good. If you are armed, if you're unarmed security, you're worthless. And again, I have to disagree with that. I think it goes back to that person's complex and their dependability on that gun to resolve a situation. Most situations that, that you resolve are not with a gun, you guys. Just think about all the situations that you handled as armed security where they handle with a gun. And the chances are, no. <laughs> this is not a war zone, guys. Okay? Um, sad story. There's a security officer. He worked armed on an armed contract account. Um, and I knew him. He came in and we had a discussion. And it, it, it had to do with, it was kind of like a child custody situation. And he asked me for advice. About a week later, his soon to be ex-wife served him with a restraining order. That restraining order had a gun takeaway order. This man's bread and butter was based on him carrying a gun. That's his livelihood. I want to say a couple hours before he was about to get served. He shot his dog. And he... He grabbed his two-year-old daughter. Put the barrel of his service weapon... Uh, 40 caliber is the gun that he used with security and blew his daughter's brains out. This man's life was based on him having a gun. That's it. If I don't have a gun, then I don't have a career. I don't have a job. This is what makes me. Guys and gals, what makes you as a human being as a strong individual is not the gun. It's the person behind the gun. So if you find yourself depending on a gun for your livelihood or your sense of being, you got to do that soul searching and ask, who am I? There's a lot of occasions and I have a concealed carry permit. There's a lot of situations where I don't, I'm not even carrying and I made it, made it through. You're not, nobody is going to kill you if you don't have a gun with you. Now, yeah, there's always that possibility, but look, just look at the chances. What's my chance of being killed? What's my chances of this gun actually saving, saving my life? And even those security officers who have a gun, they end up losing their life because of what happens up here. They can't think straight enough. They can't think tact tactically. They can have the best gun out there and that gun won't save their life. It's it's what's up here. So that's all I want to have. Hopefully those of you who are armed don't have this complex that you're better than those who are unarmed. And you just, just, just ha ask yourself, who am I and what makes me? So that's all I got. Stay blessed, everybody. Please be out there and and just be safe. It's getting dangerous out there. Please take my survey if you haven't yet already. I have a two question survey that I posted a couple of days ago. It's in the community section tab. I'm looking forward to the dialogue and you guys all take care. Bye. And we are signing off. <laughs>